Welcome back everyone. I hope you're having a good day today. We're going to be in Life of Fred Australia. If you have an Australia book, go ahead and get your book out now. Remember, you can press pause at any time during this video. Today, we're going to be on page 103, chapter 16, and the title is Australia. The sun was shining in Fred's face. The flight attendant said, Hey, wake up, sleepyhead. Fred waved goodbye to the parrot in his dream and woke up. All the other passengers had already deplaned. The plane had landed in Sydney, Australia. It was that day after Fred left Los Angeles. Fred had slept the whole trip. He was one of the few people in the world who had flown across the Pacific Ocean and never saw a drop of water. It was June in Sydney. It was 59 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 degrees Celsius in the metric system. Winter was approaching. Wait a minute. I, your reader, object. This is nuts. Everyone knows that's wrong. In June, it is getting warmer, not colder. You, Mr. Author, should have written that summer was approaching. What everyone knows is sometimes wrong. Hundreds of years ago, everyone knew that the earth was flat. That was obvious. It didn't look curved. If it were a ball, then people on the bottom side would fall off. Some of the people who believed the earth was flat even misused the Bible to try to prove their scientific view of the earth. But what has this to do with winter in June? I'm getting to that. Just because you like to sing jingle bells in December doesn't mean that the whole earth is the same as where you live. The bottom half of the earth has its seasons reversed. Christmas comes in the warmer part of the year. The equator is like a belt that goes around the tummy of the earth. Below south of the equator is the warmest when it is coldest above north of the equator. If you don't believe me, you can look at the weather page in the newspaper each day for a year. The weather page often gives the temperature for different places on the earth. Today, the high temperature in Sydney is 68 degrees. Keep a record of the Sydney temperatures for a year. You will see that it gets warmer there when it gets colder in the United States or in Europe. I just had a great thought. Would you care to share it with me? If I were super rich, I would live where I live now from the middle of spring until the middle of fall. Then I would move across the equator to my second house. There, it would be in the middle of spring. I would stay there until the middle of fall and then move back to my original house. I would get two summers and no winters each year. You have learned a little geography and it might have changed your life. In mathematics, a ball is called a sphere. In geography, the half of the earth that is above the equator is called the northern hemisphere. Hemisphere? equals hemi plus sphere. Hemi comes from the Greek, it means half. Semi comes from the Latin, it means half. Hemi is a prefix, a prefix attached to the front part of a word to change its meaning. A sphere is a whole ball. A hemisphere is half of a ball. Weekly means every seven days. Semi-weekly means something that occurs twice a week. Semi-annual means twice a year. Some chocolate is marked semi-sweet. That means that it is only half sweet. Adding more sugar would make it sweet. Christina Rossetti is one of my favorite poets. In a poem called May, she wrote, With all sweet things it passed away, and left me old and cold and gray. A line of poetry is called a stick. With all sweet things, it passed away is a stick. Most college graduates don't know that with all sweet things is a hemistick. Another hemistick is it passed away. A hemistick is a half line of poetry. Okay, are you ready for your turn to play? Go ahead and grab a sheet of paper and a pencil. Remember, you can press pause at any time. Let's begin. 
Number one, annual means once a year. Make a guess what semi-annual means. Number two, this is a circle. Draw a picture of a semicircle. Number three, un is a prefix that is used a lot. Unfed, unloved, unsung, unimportant, unlit, unmoved, unprepared, unrecognizable, unsaved, unsweetened, unable. The word savory means something that tastes good, smells good, or is pleasing and attractive. A savory meal can have all of these meanings. Fill in the blank. A bowl of dirty water is a meal that you would call blank. Hint. Look at the previous two paragraphs. This is a paragraph. It starts with some white space at the beginning and continues on for one or more sentences. This is a second paragraph. It is also indented, the white space. This is a very short paragraph. Okay, here are your answers. Go ahead and check your work. Now, are you ready for today's homeschooling meme? Here you go. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that one. Join me here tomorrow for chapter 17. Bye for now.